let's turn this kitty into a piece of artwork on Adobe Fresco. Oh my God. <gasps> okay, so the first step is just setting up your artboard or your canvas. Um, I chose to do a postcard size in 300 DPI. Oh my gosh. So then I import my references. I'm just laughing because for some reason, Fresco loves to import my photos in like the weirdest way possible. Um, so now I just used like this pre-made palette for digital art online. And I just kind of pick and choose colors as like a starting off point, And then I refine them a little bit later. So here I am creating kind of the background and I really wanted to choose you know, sort of like a contrasting color to the main subject. So I chose this cool like chartreuse color, green, like bright green, which I've been obsessed with recently. So after I draw my little background, I start to get started on the sketch. And when I do the sketch, I kind of want to like, I don't want it to be super photorealistic. You know, I want it to be fun and funky and a little bit cartoony, which I'm still working on. You know, I'm still working on developing the style. It's all fun. Please excuse the uh, tripod shaking. My cats like would not stop bothering me while I was recording this video. So this face is hilarious. I don't know what I was, I don't know. These eyes just stare into my soul. So I erase them. <laughs> I'm like, let's go more cartoony. <laughs> Um, so when I'm sketching in Adobe Fresco, I like to just keep it loose and I really like to mess around with the different like tools and options. So I'll do like, you know, I'll use the lasso tool to select things and rotate them and whatnot. I used to be really like annoying about, you know, using the tools and resources that digital artists inherently have you know like i used to be super against using the warp tool and warping my sketches and it just it's a waste of time to not use all of the tools that are at your disposal when you're doing digital art because it is different you know there's different challenges than traditional art and you know with different challenges comes different um positives or benefits so I am liking how the sketch is coming out. I think the eyes are a little bit like humanoid. I don't know, there's something with cat's eyes that they just always look very sassy. Uh, here I am really emphasizing the fluffiness of the tail and her little ear floofs, which are my favorite thing ever. And I'm, you know, just going through and using the warp tool and seeing like what looks good. Yeah, and just flipping my sketch like a million times to make sure I like it uh, from all angles. And flipping your sketch is super easy in Adobe Fresco, which I love. It's like literally two clicks. So I'm just refining the face. I think it looks starting to look so freaking cute. All right, so we are at the end of our sketch. Now this looks pretty good for now. So I put it in multiply and I set the layer opacity pretty low. Um, Cause what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna block in some shapes with the lasso tool. Um, so the way that I do this is I kind of separate the body parts so that when I shade, it makes it a lot easier. All right, so I'm going in with my lasso tool and I'm trying to focus on, you know, creating kind of jagged shapes. Cause I really like this kind of paper cutout feeling. Um, so right now I'm just doing sort of the front, like the head combined with the chest combined with the legs. And then I take my canvas flat brush and I just color it all in there and then I make a layer on top. This is my cute little tail. I think I love this part the best just because, I don't know, I love the jagged look of the tail. I think it's super cute. 
it like looks fluffy but stylized you know and then I do the back of the body there and the ears are kind of a struggle because I want to put them like behind the head but then I like there's also parts of the ears that go over the head so I think later in the video I kind of do a layer on top to kind of mesh those together and there's a little snout in the eyes and some of these colors are just placeholder colors so that I can tell you know where the layer stops and starts let's start with the body so here's our body layer like our front head body and I'm gonna make a new layer and then I'm gonna click this to make it a clipping layer so now doesn't matter what we do won't go it's parented to this all right so now I am just blocking in those colors she's a beautiful calico kitty and while I have that area selected I like to kind of mess around and you know use different textural brushes I really really love using the lasso tool with textural brushes so you get like that contrast between you know the rough texture of the canvas brush against that really sharp uh, line from the lasso tool. I just think it looks really cool. It really looks like um, like cut paper. It looks like more physical, you know, it doesn't look so flat and like washed out. You know, that was my huge problem when I first started digital art was, you know, everything looked so flat and like not on purpose. You know, it looked very like, like I used a lot of like soft brushes and a lot of crazy colors that were way too saturated. So I'm fine. I'm glad I have Adobe Fresco now because there's just so many different brushes you can use that are just pre-built into the program and they have a lot of flexibility. So here I am shading that darker white color. So I'm kind of doing a mix of like lassoing and coloring and then just kind of coloring straight on. I am doing the nose. I find that um, coloring white fur is kind of hard because I always do too much and it's, it's more subtle, you know. White fur is a lot easier to render when you know, you're in digital and you have like a lot of like wiggle room. Um, acrylic paint, not so much. It's like really annoying to work with like six different shades of off white trying to like achieve that realistic look. But here we're not really going for realistic because, you know, when I wanted to, I wanted to do pet portraits in an affordable way and like for so long, I had only been able to offer, you know, physical painted canvases. Oh yeah, I remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> Doing these digital pet portraits is really fun because I, I really wanted to sit down and figure out a way to dr like create a pet portrait artwork that wasn't just like copying a photo. Um, for me, like photorealism is obviously very impressive. But with digital art, it just like confuses me, you know, like especially now with AI R and like how advanced, you know, photo filters are like people can turn their cat into, you know, an anime cat for free on the Internet with like no effort at all other than, you know, like surrendering your rights to the image. <laughs> um, so I wanted to do something that was unique, like something that you couldn't replicate with just like a filter. I mean, I'm sure, you know, with some sort of AI software, you could, you know, do whatever you wanted. But I wanted this to be unique and different and funky and a little bit cartoony. I really love how the chest came out on this. I think it came out so freaking cute. So I'm basically just like lassoing and then like towards the base of the fur, I'm doing it darker. And then at the tips, I'm doing it really light so that, and I'm starting from the bottom and then working my way up so that it looks like this layered, like fluffy look. 
That's probably my favorite part of um, this whole drawing. Something funny about uh, these pet portraits is that I basically just used like three different brushes. Uh, so I use the, I think it's pen soft or pencil on soft canvas brush, the flat canvas brush, and there's like a flat wash brush that I'm using. And I don't know how I like landed on these as what I'm using, but I really enjoy it because when I first started using Adobe Fresco, like I said, they have amazing, you know, brushes pre-built into the program. Um, but I would spend like the first 45 minutes of drawing just like looking through all the different brushes and it was kind of a waste of time. So <laughs> being able to like know the brushes a little bit better and have a few that I kind of have a little more mastery of just helps so much. I think my favorite part is probably doing the markings. I think that's cute. Like when you can take a pet portrait and really push into those details that make it a portrait, you know, and not just like an image of any old cat. So here I am doing the eyes. This to me is like the hardest part because I feel like I always put way too many details or like the eyes, like the pupils, like the pupils need to be perfect. Like the pupils of one cat are gonna be completely different from the pupils of another cat. Like if you're drawing like a Siamese cat, they might have like their pupils totally cross-eyed. Uh, whereas some cats are like, way more known for having like little slit pupils. Awesome. So this is where like having all those different layers comes super in handy is like when you're doing, you know, the little areas under the mouth or under the nose, you can really punch in some like hard detail there, you know, to have good contrast between, you know, the, to like make more 3D. Like, I feel like separating the body parts out into different layers helps sell that 3D look. Oh my gosh, I love the tail. I did the same sort of technique that I did on the chest. I just love, like, the jagged edges. I think it just comes out so cool. Like, I'm sure it needs a little more refinement. <laughs> um... But it's just this is a cool neat effect it's like almost like paper so here i'm just like layering different kind of jagged shapes using um the fade wash brush to kind of give it some more 3d and like some more three-dimensional appearance wow 
Look at all those lovely little jagged shapes. All right, so as part of this technique or kind of more of like <laughs> as part of this style, I really like to lay down the colors with, you know, big brushes like the canvas brush and the flat wash brush. Um, and then on top, like I'll do these little details with the uh, soft pencil just to give it kind of like a hand drawn look. Um, I find with digital art, it's really hard to achieve a sense of like imperfection, but on purpose that I think digital art is able to, or traditional art is able to capture that way easier because with traditional art, you know, you have pre-made materials and you're combining them and, you know, the way they layer and the way that they, you know, kind of look, it's not perfect, it's random. And that randomness adds a lot of visual interest and a lot of texture. And it's just, it's hard to, to replicate that with digital art, um, which is why I love fresco because, you know, there's so many um, different brushes that you can use and the program runs the brushes pretty quickly. Like I remember when I would draw in Photoshop, it was super annoying because, you know, all the brush options are kind of hidden away in like a little subsection of the, of the program. And I don't know, it was just like the brushes that I had, like, yeah, technically I have infinite brushes in Adobe Photoshop, but I always felt like it was just really, really hard to get them to work properly. And like to set up all your brush presets is just a freaking nightmare to me. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, so I love Fresco because it's like, if you know Photoshop and you've used the drawing options in Photoshop, you're probably pretty good already at Fresco. It takes a little bit of learning curve because it's kind of like, if you took Photoshop, you just stripped it all the way down to just it's like basic painting, um, painting capabilities. And then you added a, you know, touchscreen friendly user interface. I really like Fresco. I draw in Fresco exclusively digitally now. Um, I I don't know. There's so, like, I always drew in Photoshop, but like, I always hated it because I felt like it just looked super flat. It was really tedious to do anything, you know? And, and I don't know, it kind of frustrated me because there'd be times when like, I would want to use a brush that was like, let's say a watercolor brush or something that's like very fancy. Like it's trying to replicate like real materials. And I just felt like Photoshop would lag. It would just like, crash right now this this um computer that i'm using is a microsoft surface studio pro or something like that but before i had this one i had a like an older microsoft surface and i swear every time i would open up photoshop and like try to draw using the touch screen it was just it was so laggy it drove me freaking nuts i mean this fresco is like a cloud-based uh program which has its own issues uh, you know obviously you can't you know you you can run out of <laughs> of cloud space which is really annoying I remember when I first started using fresco it was so frustrating because I couldn't understand like why can I not save things on my computer you can but the purpose of Adobe Fresco and the reason it's so fast and works so well is because it is cloud-based and it runs off the internet. So, you know, there's pros and cons to that, but I think this is a really awesome program and I love using it. So we can see this is pretty much done. I'm just messing around with hue and saturation until I forget what it originally looked like. <laughs> I always do this and I just like do weird stuff. I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you uh, got kind of a, maybe a different take on how to draw in Adobe Fresco. I'm really excited to develop this style and I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I really wanna make more videos for this channel. Um, I wanna do like some draw with me's, maybe like, like I originally intended this video to be real time and I, re I like recorded myself talking while I was, you know, drawing, but it, 
the drawing took me like an hour or two hours or something and talking for that long is just really hard. Like, I don't really know what to talk about.